the bison herd in Yellowstone is unique for a variety of reasons. Number one, it's the, the only bison herd in the lower 48 states that remained intact on the ground. They went through a severe bottleneck. There are only 23 of them left by the turn of the 19th into the 20th century. There still was that residual gene pool left in Yellowstone country that those animals had existed there since the Ice Age. Before the Europeans came and started to influence the, the habitat, we had a tapestry of wildlife and plants across the Great Plains that worked together to make sure that all kinds of ecological processes were continuing to occur. In the absence of bison, that large grazer is gone. The herd has grown to over 3,000 animals now, and these bison are preyed upon by grizzly bears and wolves, and so Mother Nature is constantly sharpening the genetic viability of these animals. It is a concern to conservation biologists because we have that one herd in one locale, and there could be a disaster, an earthquake, or some new foreign disease that comes in that could really reduce or eliminate the bison. So it's important to conserve those genetics by getting herds out in multiple places. We knew the only way that we could begin to restore bison to the tribes or any place else is if we could develop a process where the livestock industry was assured that the bison no longer had brucellosis. So the Intertribal Bison Cooperative and NWF proposed this quarantine facility to separate out the carriers from the clean bison ensure through a process of constant testing that those bison that were uh, not carriers remained clean and then the goal was to get those bison certified as healthy and get them reintroduced to the tribes. I can't emphasize enough how important restoration is for the tribes. I remember a friend of mine at Cheyenne River saying, Steve, you've been working on this for 15 or 20 years. We've been praying for this for 120.